So you're finally getting the hang of this whole blogging thing. You're putting up multiple posts per month and you maybe even got your first couple of comments from real life readers that aren't your mom. Love you, mom. But when it comes to Instagram, your head is swarming with questions like, what the heck do I even post on Instagram? So let's talk about creating a curated Instagram that supports your blog. Before we dive into how to curate a beautiful Instagram feed, let's first perfect your bio. When someone comes to your page, they have less than 30 seconds to decide whether they're going to either hit the follow button or leave without following. In addition to the actual content on your feed, your bio is the first place that you're able to reel people in, tell them a little about you, but more importantly, about what is in it for them. So let's start with the name field at the top. Did you know that your name field is the only searchable section of your Instagram bio? This is where you want to insert targeted keywords related to your niche and what you do. For example, if someone types in travel blogger within the search bar, Instagram will pull up the best results related to that search. If your name field includes the keyword travel blogger, you will increase your chances of popping up on the searcher's search suggestions. When writing your name field, keep in mind that Instagram allows a total of 30 characters in your name field. So if you have a short name, it's possible to include both your first name and your last name and your targeted keyword. However, if your name happens to be longer, you can choose between adding your targeted keyword for searchability and discoverability or just having your name. Now let's dive into writing your actual bio. With only 150 characters, your bio needs to pack a punch and capture your ideal audience's attention right away. Treat your bio like an elevator pitch. A great elevator pitch should go beyond who you are and what you do. Instead, it should tell your audience who you help and what value they can expect from following you. For example, my bio says, I help influencers build profitable businesses. Immediately, you know exactly who I help, influencers, and what's in it for them if they follow me. And finally, include a call to action directing your Instagram page visitor to click the link in your bio. If you're wanting your Instagram to support your blog and actively bring eyeballs from your Instagram over to your blog posts, you'll want the link in your bio to be one of your blog posts and that call to action text to motivate people to click on the link. You can also build out a page on your website that has multiple relevant links like mine. The advantage of having this on your website versus something like Linktree is you're not losing traffic and you're keeping people in your world. For example, if I'm promoting this blog post about 20 steps for starting a podcast, I wouldn't just write new blog post in my bio or new post about podcasting. I would write want to start a podcast or step-by-step -step guide for starting a podcast. Now that you have your captivating bio written, let's move on to Instagram branding and talk about the colors of your feed first. This is a can't miss step in creating a curated Instagram feed. When it comes to your brand colors on Instagram, I recommend just identifying two main brand colors to showcase on your Instagram. You can show these brand colors on your highlight covers, in the clothing that you wear in your photos, and in the covers of your reels and IGTV videos. You can see here that one of my main brand colors is a dusty rose, and you can see the color quite often throughout my feed. If you don't know what your brand colors are, here are some basic guidelines to figure out where to start. White conveys optimism and fresh beginnings. Purple conveys sophistication and luxury. Green can symbolize either wealth or nature and serenity. There are great websites to check out if you want to go deeper into color symbolism. As you're figuring out which one you should go with, consider your ideal audience. Which color or colors does he or she resonate with most? Then once you have one or two shades of those colors selected, I recommend using the website colors.co to build out the rest of your brand color palette. The second thing to consider when it comes to the branding of your Instagram is the look and feel of your feed. Are you wanting to create a bright and happy or moody and edgy feel or something else? You can communicate this mood through your editing, through the lighting in your photos, and even through your poses. If you're aiming for a bright and happy mood on your feed, shoot in bright natural light, keep your editing light and saturated, and smile at the camera in your photos. If you're trying for something more moody, you could perhaps shoot in darker places, edit your photos to be slightly darker and more desaturated saturated and pose facing away from the camera. Whatever mood you're looking to convey, keep that in mind with every piece of content that you create. Now to answer the age-old question of what the heck do I even post on Instagram? Well, let's start with your content pillars or the three to five main topics that you post about on your blog. Since you want your Instagram to complement your blog, those will also be the main topics that you post about on your Instagram. Here's an example. Let's say you are a beauty blogger and one of your content pillars is clean skincare. You would then make a list of at least 10 micro topics underneath that main topic. For example, ingredients to stay away from in skincare products or top five clean moisturizers. Those micro topics all represent pieces 
pieces of content that you can write about on Instagram. Then you're going to actually plan out your Instagram content. Let's say for the sake of example, you're planning the next three days of content. Your calendar might look something like this. I made this as an example if I were a fashion blogger just to show you what this might look like for you. On day one, a post about five top clean mascaras. Day two is a post about the trending haircuts of the year. Day three is a post about fall makeup trends. And for each of these pieces of content, it's up to you what format of Instagram post you wanna use. So the first option you have is a static Instagram photo where you can incorporate the mood of your brand into the photo by using one of your brand colors, for example, in the image. You can always use a photo from your blog post and in the caption, repurpose your blog post by condensing it to fit Instagram's character limit. The second option is a carousel post. The best way to communicate your curated feed through a carousel that has images is to, again, represent your brand through your image. But if your carousel is made up of graphics, graphics and text like this one, make sure you're using your brand colors and fonts. The third option is an Instagram Reel. To keep your feed looking curated when posting an Instagram Reel, you can create an on-brand cover for your Reel like this one. Which format you choose for which post is ultimately up to you depending on what feels best to communicate your message. Then you'll mark the type of content on your calendar too. So for example, day one, you'll write a caption listing out your top five clean mascaras with a photo. Day two, creating a reel showing the top trending haircuts of the year. Day three, you'll create a carousel post showing the season's top fall makeup trends. And by me showing this example of posting once per day, I want to note that it is important to figure out a posting schedule that is realistic for you and that you can be consistent with, even if that means only posting two or three times per week. Once I have my content planned out for the next three or seven days, I will collect all of my visual content into an Instagram feed planner to make sure that I'm sticking to my goal of having a curated Instagram feed. My favorite Instagram planner is Planoly, but there are many others like Later and Preview that you can weigh the pros and cons of and find which one you like best. I'm curious to know, what's your favorite way to use Instagram to get more readers over to your blog? And get excited because my next episode is going to be all about promoting your blog content on Instagram. For more information about Instagram strategy and for tips for turning your Instagram audience into avid readers of your blog, make sure you hit subscribe and check out the other videos on Google for Creators.